So many of us may know what a typhoon is or what we should be aware of because of Yolanda. And since it's the season for typhoons, why not review about them? Here are five things you should know about typhoons in your country. Number one, where is a typhoon and how do typhoons form? A typhoon is a mature tropical cyclone that develops 180 and 100 degrees on the northern hemisphere. Why is it important to know about typhoons? Typhoons are the most deadliest storms on earth. And clearly, as survivors, we know that because of Yolanda. And now, how do typhoons form? Typhoons start out as a tropical depression caused by warm moist air rising creating a low pressure above the ocean. Tropical depression brings thunderstorms with winds 37 to 67 kilometers per hour. When thunderstorms have wind excess of 63 kilometers per hour, it is now classified as a strong thunderstorm. As air continues to rise, the thunderstorm gets its counterclockwise rotation. Okay, better. Rising, rising air plus the Grolier's effect give the thunderstorm its counterclockwise rotation. When winds exceed 119 kilometers per hour, it is now considered from a strong thunderstorm to a typhoon. Fun fact, typhoons actually become weaker on land because land is not as warm as the ocean. Now on to number two. Current news about typhoons in the Philippines. On November 10, classes were suspended because of tropical depression alone. It caused suspension for all schools in many provinces. Also suspension in some universities and colleges. They suspended classes in all levels, and public and private. On October 21, Typhoon Paolo, international name LAN, expected to leave the Philippine Air of Responsibility, Saturday afternoon till Sunday morning. Pagasa said that the typhoon was last spotted 840 kilometers east of Basco, Batanes. The other news coverages from this year we're all from August and the months below it. And now on to number three. Agencies related to typhoon monitoring in the Philippines. So far, I could only research one agency, and many of you may know this agency, and it is the one and only PAGASA. If you don't know or forgot what PAGASA stands for, PAGASA stands for Philippine Atmospheric Geographic Astronomical Services Administration. Yeah. Pagasa doesn't just monitor typhoons, but also different weather phenomena that happen within the Philippine area of responsibility. And Pagasa is the source of weather information for our country. The news gets its information from Pagasa and announces it through news channels like ANC, ABS-CBN, and on the radio. Number four, things to prepare for an incoming typhoon. I listed down simple yet practical things to prepare for an incoming typhoon, starting with First, food and water, an adequate amount for your group or family. Better if it doesn't need cooking because there may come a time where cooking is not feasible. Second, a radio, to get the latest news of what's happening. Third, a flotation device, just in case you get caught in the floodwaters to prevent you from drowning. Fourth, first aid kit, to be able to treat illnesses and injuries. Fifth, flashlight with extra batteries. Better hand crank or rechargeable. Sixth, whistle. To call your rescuers or anyone nearby who can help you. Seventh, clothes and towel in a dry bag or plastic bag so you can change clothes. Eighth, raincoat or jacket to keep yourselves warm and dry. Ninth, candle with lighter or matches. Tenth, tape to be able to hold down, seal, or cover things. And now on to the next. With number five, practical tips. Here's some practical tips that I searched for you. Number one, 
Evaluate where you live. If it's near danger zones, like mountains, hillsides, or near the ocean, or low-level areas, you should evacuate or find a safe place or get to high ground that is not prone to landslides. Number two, charge on important electronics like flashlights, phones, or chargeable batteries before the blackout. Number three, keep all important things in high or safe places. Number four, unplug all electronics to avoid electrocution or shortages. Number five, reinforce your house or building to avoid debris or floodwaters from coming in, or at least to minimize the damage. Six, constantly monitor the news for the latest coverage to be aware of what's happening. Number seven, don't go outside because you may get hit or killed by debris or swept away by floodwaters just like what happened to the victims that died during Yolanda. Eight, don't step or go into floodwaters because they may hold deadly bacteria, viruses, or diseases. But you have no choice, it's okay. Just make sure you wash afterwards. Ninth, after a typhoon, evaluate your place or home to see if it's sa still safe to be in. After Yolanda, there was a cross from the church behind her house that was about to fall. But luckily, my dad spotted it and told us to move to a different place. Ten, don't be alone. Stay in a group to help each other, to be able to locate each other, and to protect each other and each other's belongings from neuters or kidnappers. 11. Always have a plan for any possible contingencies, an exit plan, and a plan to contact family members in safe areas to let them know your situation. And if you have any experiences on this topic, please share to others so they will know what to do to stay safe during typhoons. Thank you for watching.